Well, I wasn't planning on making a video, but I'll keep this one sweet, short and sweet. Mike, we're gonna need the bigger pump. That's the three quarter. We're gonna need that. that need the long I one? need the long one, yes, sir. Um, so we came out here, gentlemen didn't have no water, and um, <laughs> we didn't expect it to be this deep. Uh, but it is, uh, I'm gonna say, estimated 380 feet deep. Now, they have a bunch of torque arresters on it, and uh, apparently a local plumbing company uh, had come in and put this well pump in about six years ago, maybe, in 2018 it looks like, so yeah, six years ago. This is a half horsepower, 10 gallon a minute pump. This pump is capable of max depth, 140, 150 feet, and they have it in there at 380 feet, which is absolutely crazy. And then all the way at the top, they've spliced the pipe with a plastic splice and two clamps. So all this weight was hanging on that little plastic thing. So we're going to go ahead, get it all cleaned up, put the right size pump on it. Yeah, see the difference in the size of those pumps? Just side by side, you can... That's 10 gallon minute half horsepower. Crazy. And this is a 5 gallon a minute, 3 quarter horsepower. You can see the overall length of the motor Double and the overall length of the stack, yeah. So this has got twice or two and a half times more the impeller inside of it. Totally capable of lifting from the depth that we're currently at. But I'm going to go ahead and cut it all off, clean it all up, and get this new pump all put on. All right. Well, he went and got us some rags, so they're going to be cleaning the pipe and cleaning the wire all the way down the full length and I'm gonna sit here and uh, get this all prepped up all right let's see we need some cutters got everything over here ironically we brought the electric pump puller and it was just too fast to just pull it out by hand even though it was 380 feet it's to me it's just so much faster to pull it with my two-wheel wonder man <clears throat> especially when you got somebody willing to help so there's three of us pulling on that thing. I think we had it out in about eight minutes, start to finish. But um, I'll show you some more crazy stuff when we get up to the well seal. I had this total assumption that it was light based on how they had the well seal set up. And when I picked up on it, it felt heavy. But it felt heavy due to the resistance of the um, torque arrestor swole out. See, this right here is exactly what I hate about a torque arrestor. Like they put it right here if you want to use one it's correct to put it five foot above the pump but they put this directly above the pump so if or when this portion fails this part here folds back over top of the pump making it bigger than the inside diameter of the well and it becomes a fit to pull out and you can tell right here where it had been rubbing but this is only about six years old so it hasn't degraded the rubber due to age long enough for it to fail completely um this one here is original you can tell and see how it slips inside the clamp see that see how it pulls out that clamp used to be tight at one time so it's just the rubber see how that pulled right on out of there that's why i don't like these things because even though the clamp was tight you can still slide it out and then you take this here let's see so when this these right here will fold, and they'll fold back like this, and they fold back like this, and they'll go over top of the pump, and it just, you know, that's why I just dislike torque arresters. They have a purpose, but, you know, <clears throat> I think there's four on this system. And the wire is okay, but there's so much else wrong with it. The a half horsepower pump put it 380 foot. It's just, you know, you go overkill in one area, but then you're under on another. It just blows my mind. All right, let me stop talking and get to work. So Mike and I just finished taping up the uh, the pipe and the wire. The original wire was still good. Um, you can see my truck's way up there. And we're not quite at the end. The end is down there. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of detail with you here. This pipe is 160 PSI rated pipe. So if you factor in 0.44 PSI per foot or factor in 1.2 PSI for every two foot, 
um, that makes 160 psi pipe only viable to 320 foot and then you tack on 60 psi to that and now you're a little overboard even when you're past the 300 foot mark now with this we're somewhere around 380 and so that's that's the first you know issue the pipe is overloaded um down at the end so this system should have never been put in deeper than say 300 foot because that's still maxing out the pipe at 300 foot then they had this this is a plastic inline splice with only two clamps on it one on each side so all of the vertical weight that's hanging on the system probably 150 pounds of weight is suspended by this little plastic fitting right here if this breaks then it falls and then your wire and your rope hang on to it so what we're going to do we're going to cut that right there and we're going to take this little stitch of pipe out of the equation which is about 30 feet um, and we're going to put our well seal right here i assume what they did is they kinked it and they put a uh, splice in the spot where they kinked it now another crazy thing is that's why originally i thought it was shallow because i saw it like this that was their well seal setup which to me it just looks like a pvc setup that we did back in the late 80s early 90s i figured okay 80 foot 100 foot cool we'll just pull it out by hand and then once i picked it up and i saw what they did here they went did a pvc fitting to a female slip by one inch barb so all of that was hanging on this weird female fitting here and hanging on the pvc 90 that's just a whole lot of weight to be suspended on something like this so we're going to change this over to my typical brass 90 setup and get rid of this and um, we'll cut off this little length of pipe here so we're all good we're going to go ahead and drag it back and uh, we'll address the wellhead and uh, get this thing put back in the hole but yeah a lot going on here that was incorrect Now, even though the pump was at, you know, 350, 380 foot, the pump itself that was originally on there wasn't capable of lifting water no deeper than, say, 150 foot. So, this system has never seen the amount of weight that it could because it was never able to actually draw the water level deeper than 150 foot. So, it never needed to be that deep. But now that we put the correct size pump on it, it will actually be able to draw the water level down to that bottom 350 foot mark and it will supply the house with pressure while doing that. Whew, what a long walk. Mike, let's go ahead and pick that pump up and throw it in the hole. Oy. It goes in a lot easier than it comes out, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I saw him over there looking at us. You know the sexy went the way you got it on. Alright, we got this all done up. Let's see. My typical 90. That's better than their plastic PVC setup. And we ended up using the rags that we used to wipe off the pipe with it. We're using that as kind of a insulating factor here since it's 38 degrees outside and there was no insulation in this cover. Something's better than nothing. All right, let's go look at the tank. Well, first things first, look at how hilarious this is. The tank is all the way at the opposite end of the house, down here where it's short. So you look at the age of this thing, it looks really, really old. Um, and then the code date is right here, 95. I don't know if you can see that. See, this is 954095, so the last two. It's either 95 or 89. Not really sure when the house was built. But a um, quick way to tell if your tank is bad, uh, now that it has... The key here is you have to have drained it all the way out. So you got to have it off, and you got to have all the pressure drained to zero. So if we open this, we don't have any water, right? So that's the only way you can thoroughly test a tank to see if it's good or bad. First test is a tip test. So we take it. See how I can move it? It's nice and lightweight. If it was heavy or you hear water sloshing, the tank is bad. So the second test we're going to do, a more definitive test, is we're going to find the air valve 
underneath this. Now you can only do this with all the water out of it. And we're gonna take this digital gauge here, wait for it to read zero. And then let's see what we get. Holy crap, 27 pounds of pressure. This tank has got to be over 20 years old and it still has the correct amount of air pressure in it. So you need to be two pounds below whatever your cut on is. And this switch here, you can look right there. It says cut on at 30, cut off at 50. So this tank, regardless of what it looks like, is still good. Amazing. So there's no need to add that to the bill today. We're just going to let him use this until it dies. And I will explain to the homeowner exactly what to be on the lookout for if the tank dies. Basically, when you start noticing surging water in your house, uh, most of the time people commonly notice it in the shower. And it'll be... Or it'll be at your kitchen sink acting like that. And the high, low, high, low, high, low... Uh, fluctuation of pressure is your switch clicking on off on off on off and that's your pump kicking on and off on and off and that's due to the fact that the tank is waterlogged and the bladder's back so if you ever notice that replace your tank or you'll be killing your pump within a matter of weeks okay let's get on out of here it's good you can uh turn the breaker on to the well pump hey go ahead before you do that open up an outdoor spigot that way we get out any trash straight out the outdoor faucet. All right, let's climb out of this hole. Uh, not break anything. Uh, man, that's so funny. The perspective of reality versus camera versus reality is so different. Uh, so much tighter. Okay. And then finally we get a... Oh, yeah, they dug it out. Oh! Oh boy, we can stand up now. That's a narrow little spot up there, y'all. Look, that's that's where I was at. See the blue tank? <laughs> this is crazy. All right, let's go see some water working. Oh yeah, yeah, it's got all that lime to fill. Oh yeah, it'll start spitting out the air. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets black here in a little bit. Yep, there it goes. With the amount of uh, manganese you had and not having a water filter, it's going to be pretty rough. Cool. We're going to let that run for about 10 minutes. Let it flush it. Yeah, she got some turbidity in her. That is freezing cold, y'all. Yeah. The water is almost warmer than the ambient air temperature. Yeah. It's crazy. It looks so much dirtier in, in real life. Yeah, you can really tell it there. Put it here, the perspective of the brick changes it, but like that, you can really tell just how it's kind of a red dingy burgundy color that's all manganese and probably iron Did they clear up on the uh, yeah it's because we pulled the well pump out and we disturbed everything the more you use it the faster it'll get clear that's what i'm saying we need to run the well and just leave this run until that gets a little bit better looking you know, you can we can let it run for 30 minutes, turn it off for an hour, and then let it run for another 30 minutes, turn it off for an hour. Eventually, it'll clear up. Cool. Pump kicked on again. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I know this video is a little short. Um, I really didn't have the thought of making a, a video today, an educational video, but um, hopefully you learned a little bit of something. That was more on the lines of what you don't do things I don't like to use stuff like that I know I have a lot of questions why don't I like using torque arresters and why I don't like rope and you know but you never know what you're gonna find when you go out to do a job but hopefully y'all enjoyed that it's kind of short getting ready for the holidays
cold weather has set in. It has been 38 degrees here all day. It was 25 when we woke up this morning. It may not be cold to some of y'all, but that's cold here. Um, so hopefully uh, our drilling has kind of been slowed down due to weather. Once it drops below 32, we don't go out. Uh, we risk breaking hammers and we risk our water freezing up in our trucks. So um, we're just at the point now where it doesn't matter. And uh, when we have good days above say 38 degrees, we'll go out and drill. And then any other days we try to take care of shop stuff and take care of service calls. So. Uh, Stay tuned for more service calls since it's the winter time. And uh, if you don't mind, please hit the like button on this video. Something has happened to the YouTube algorithm which has slowed my video consumption down like 75%. I don't really know what it is, but um, without engagement, without likes, without comments, um, the videos just get pushed to the bottom so don't really understand what's the difference but um i'm just at the mercy of youtube and the only people who can help me out is you so see y'all later thanks